Welcome back to Morning Here We Are in Melbourne and grateful to be here. We've got a great live audience. You're going to love this story, birth order. The birth order apparently influences uh, our life and uh, how we approach the world. And research says that birth order is a direct link to our personality and our position in life. Um, Michael Gross has written a book called Why Fir Firstborns Rule the World and Lastborns What a Change It. He joins me. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Tara. Okay. Birth order, why does it influence uh, our personality? Yeah, there's two aspects to it. Firstly, the parenting, it's, it's where, where we come in the family. So when you're a parent of a firstborn, very different expectations if you're a parent of a 12th, as we learnt before. Oh, yes. Uh, and also every position has a different requirement of you. So if you're the first one, you sort of got to be in charge. And if you're the youngest, well, you're being bossed around a fair bit. So each position does require something of you. It, it does stand to reason because how many times do we, you know, hear parents say, I've got three children, four children, and they are all so different. Okay, let's get to the, um, the four birth order ty types. Let's start with uh, the firstborn. Now, their personality traits are with a broad brush. Yeah, look, just broad brush. They're often achievement oriented. Uh, can be sort of the caring nurturers. They like to be in charge. Can be perfectionists. Um, and job-wise, I often go into the professions or jobs such as the law. Uh, research has shown recently that 40% of small businesses are owned by firstborns. Wow. So the bar is a lot higher for firstborns. And they're also the, the fa what we call the family standard bearers. Uh, that means if it's an academic family, there's a fair chance the firstborn will go down that track as well. Mm. There's um, a lot of pressure on them. Oh, a pressure's lot of high. E you know, expectations. Good position to be in if you're a firstborn, because everything goes your way as a kid, but the minus is you're, you're pushed and prodded to perform, mm -hmm. and you're photographed. You're photographed doing every single damn thing. <laughs> so firstborns live with pressure. So they have a bigger photograph album? Oh, for sure. And it's, in, in many ways, it's about them. And of course, look at the famous firstborns. I mean, this is extraordinary. Bill and Hillary, both firstborns. Um, Oprah Winfrey, um, uh, Sylvester Stallone. I mean, there's, there's a yeah. lot of famous... It, there's a lot of movers, movers and shakers in that group. If you go back to the uh, American presidents, there's a high percentage of American presidents, around about 70 odd percent of American presidents have been first born. Um, when you go back into history, they're first born of 15, 16 kids. Mm. So you're more likely to go down that track. Doesn't mean that if you're a second born, you won't be a first, won't be a leader, but you'll be a different sort of leader. Okay, let's get to the uh, second born. And Okay, if you've got three kids, it's easy to be second born. What if there's two in the middle? Okay, well, um, the one thing we know if you're the second one, you'll be different than the first. Mm -hmm. So if you want to work out the second one, have an understanding of the first and you'll know they'll be different. Mm -hmm. Because the first rule of the sibling road is the longer they live together, the more diverse they'll become. Because in our audience just before the break, Laura and uh, Elisa are both uh, middle borns. So uh, across the board, what's a middle born like? More flexible, uh, a little bit more likely to go with the flow. They often leave the family first and um, a little bit more the people people. They're pretty good negotiators because they've had to sit in the middle, get on with the first, boss the second one around and so they're more flexible. Well, I'm curious, Alyssa, um, Laura, isn't it? Laura and Alyssa, yeah, yeah, you're with them, Jamie. Would you agree with that assessment? Just as I was saying that, you, you agree? Yeah, I did actually move. Um, I think Michael said that the second borns leave the family first mm -hmm. and I did actually, I'm originally from Adelaide and I was the first one to move into state out of my siblings. We all live um, in different parts of the world now, actually, but I was the first one to leave the family. And, and Alyssa is here too. We, did you yes, leave on first? Yes. There you go. Yeah, the, the, the research well strongly shows that, that they haven't got the, the same str sense of belonging as the firstborn, mm -hmm. so they'll often sort of move out of the nest. And, and here are famous uh, middleborns, uh, JFK, Donald Trump, Julia Roberts, uh, Madonna, Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get to the, um, the babies of the family. The charmers, the manipulators, the... Uh, oh, the, what are you the, saying? The, the... <laughs> Maybe I'm the last born. Do you think we're spoiled? Well, you think the... You're certainly the centre of attention, put it that way, and often you use a lot of different skills to get by, and as Michael was saying earlier, the, the, the twelfth one in the family, um, our parents sort of forget about us to a fair degree, and the one thing that youngest ones do, and I'm a youngest one, is that we are survivors. And life's pretty good if you're youngest one in, in many ways. But uh, one of the things that they're really good at is persistence because they learn early in the family if they keep at it and at it, um, someone will give in. Golly, that is so true. Um, Michael, isn't it? Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, over here. Uh, he's only got a small family, though, Kerry Anna. Yeah, one of, last of 12? 
I'm the youngest of 12. Do yeah. you agree with the assessment then? Uh, not in my family. I had nine brothers, so I was beaten up daily. <laughs> <laughs> but you survived, Michael. That's the thing. You're here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, how do, you know, parents watching this morning, and again, here are some of the, the famous last borns, but again, what do parents learn from this? Because it is so important these days to approach child rearing, and, and what do we learn from this then? I, I think sometimes, the response often I get from parents is dependent on their birth order. Often mm -hmm. firstborns want to control things. And firstborns will say, right, what do I do about this? You've told me all about this, what do I do? Mm. Um, if you're your youngest one, your more, response is more likely, well, that's really nice, Michael, but well, I'll get by. So your response will often dictate, mm -hmm. be dictated by your birth order. One off point is if you've got a firstborn, don't put pressure on them because they'll put enough pressure on themselves. Okay. If you've got the youngest one in the family, put some pressure on them because they get away with murder in to oh, I don't think so. Um, Dawn from Queensland emailed us <laughs> and she's an only child. Okay. Super firstborns, only children. Super They've firstborns. never been dethroned, uh, or self the, the ignominy of being dethroned like a, a firstborn has. Uh -huh. So very much the centre of attention. Um, often articulate. If you use uh, self-esteem and achievement as a well-adjusted child, most parents will stop at one because they spend a lot of time around adults. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do have learned recently that their IQ is about two percentage points higher than others because they're saturated, saturated by you know, sort of adult concepts and there's mm. no other children to sort of water it down. Mm -hmm. And again, famous only is there, and yeah. they are. Uh, congratulations, we're at why firstborns rule the world and the last want to change it. Fascinating. We didn't even get into the gender in those issues, but Michael Gross, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Coming up uh, on mornings from uh, Melbourne, an Australian champion magician who is just unbelievable in about 10 minutes' time. After the break, who else could be uh, today's radio star but 3AW's breakfast magician John Burns? Yeah.